Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Soul Calibur video. Today I'll be talking about the fearless samurai Mitsurugi. Now Mitsurugi isn't his actual name. At birth, he was given the name Hishiro by his father, who was a farmer so they actually grew up having relatively peaceful lives. But eventually, his homeland would be ravaged by war. So it was at this moment that Mitsurugi decided to become a samurai, as he wanted to protect those he had loved. But this wasn't quite enough, as you see due to their poor living conditions from the war, many members of Haishiro's family fell ill, including his parents and brothers, which eventually led to them dying. Now this had a massive impact on Haishiro's life, as after their funerals, he would drop his first name and take his last name Mitsurugi as his first name. The reason he had done this was because he wanted to honour his family's name by making it famous through his swordsmanship. But at this point in time, his sword skills weren't up to par, so he would train under the warlord of the Murakami clan, and through their teachings, he would become a powerful samurai. It got to the point where he'd in fact surpass his teacher, so eventually he would leave them as he wanted to face stronger opponents. So he would enroll in the Japanese armed forces. And from here, the Mitsurugi title became legendary, as his name was uttered throughout the battlefield, with many of his enemies believing that he could cut someone down in the blink of an eye. Now Mitsurugi eventually got the rank of commissioned officer, but then decided to leave because once again he wanted to find a worthy opponent. So after leaving, Mitsurugi became a hired mercenary, and around this time, the age of war started to change, as the rifle was starting to be incorporated into Japanese warfare, and although at first he didn't really think much about it, he saw its destructive capabilities. Now, believing that would in fact put him out of business, he believed that the only way he'd be able to compete with such a thing would be if he acquired a sword that was extremely powerful, so Mitsurugi would set his eyes on the legendary sword known as Soul Edge, but unfortunately during his journeys, he was unable to find it, and returned back home empty-handed. Frustrated by this, he would challenge a rifleman Tapo Hei to a duel, as he wanted to prove to not only himself, but his masters that he didn't need a legendary sword in order to compete with a rifleman. But unfortunately, he suffered an embarrassing defeat in front of his masters, as he was shot and defeated in a few mere seconds. So because of this, he would depart from Japan, as he wanted to perfect his swordsmanship, so that one day he could in fact beat the rifle. Now during his quest, he learned about an Azure Knight by the name of Nightmare. This being was said to have terrorised the entirety of Europe with the destructive capabilities that resonated from his sword. Now Mitsurugi would try his best to track him down, but eventually the trail would go cold. So Mitsurugi was in fact unable to face Nightmare. However, during this time, he had been practising his skills as a swordsman, and one day returned back to Japan so he could face Tapohei once again. But this time the results were different. Mitsurugi was able to kill the man with a single strike, redeeming his name and reputation. Now four years would pass by, and Mitsurugi continued to keep his legendary status alive, as he won battle after battle. Now one day when he saved a mysterious dying man from a group of assassins, he was handed a shard that belonged to Soul Edge. Now although he was quite sceptical about it, he did accept the item as a gift, but not long after this, he would be ambushed by a group of ninjas, as they wanted to claim this shard as their own. Now during this very brief battle, he found their style of combat very familiar, and it wasn't long till Mitsurugi realised that the unknown attackers fought the same way that Taki did, and he knew that Taki was interested in chasing after Soul Edge herself, so it would make sense if she wanted to have him be taken out of the picture. But as always, Mitsurugi was able to hold his own and kill the attackers. Now during this time, Mitsurugi was very torn with what he wanted to do, as Japan was still having a lot of internal conflict, so instead of in fact chasing after Taki, he decided decided to stay in Japan. Now by the time the third Soul Calibur game comes around, Japan would have a new feudal lord, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and many clans that were in Japan were split to whether or not to align with him or battle against him. Now the Murakami clan, who Mitsurugi had once again become a member of, refused to join Hideyoshi. So on many different occasions, the Murakami clan would clash with Hideyoshi's forces, with Mitsurugi being on every battlefield, taking out all of his enemies like a hurricane. Now after one of their victories, he'd be a approached by one of his commanders, who would inform him that Nightmare had once again resurfaced. So once again, Mitsurugi would depart from Japan, as he wanted to seek out and track down Nightmare, so he could test his strength against this being that was supposedly as strong as a god. Now on his journey, he faced many powerful opponents, but none of them were the one he was looking for. So he ultimately gave up searching for the legendary sword, as Mitsurugi himself had come to the conclusion that it's not the weapon that makes the man, but the man that makes the 
lethal weapon. He came to the conclusion that if he were to ever face Nightmare, he wouldn't be battling him so he could have Sole, but he'd be doing it so he could prove to himself and the world that he's in fact the greatest swordsman to have ever lived. Now, as some time passed by, the shard of Soul Edge that he had suddenly shot up into the air and flew away. Mitsurugi would follow it, hoping that he could find Nightmare so he could have the jewel that he had been yearning for. Now, when he arrived at the battlefield of Ostrinsburg, Mitsurugi came face to face with the hero king, Al Ghul. The two clashed and had a fierce battle, and although this wasn't Nightmare, Mitsurugi was pleased by the challenge that presented itself. So he went all out, and a fierce battle made Mitsurugi feel more alive than any other time in his life. But unfortunately, during the battle, Siegfried had destroyed Nightmare, which in turn eliminated Soul Edge, which pulled Al Ghul back into the Astral Chaos Realm, ending their fight before they could be a true victor. Now when Mitsurugi returned back to Japan, there was an era of peace, so there was no war leading to many ronins and samurai to be out of a job. So with no money to travel, Mitsurugi took up the same job his father had and became a farmer. Now over the next 17 years, he had a relatively peaceful and enjoyable life. It's not really one that he enjoyed, but it was one that he was very content with as he was starting to become an old man. But all of this changed one day when he overheard a group of soldiers mentioning a powerful and legendary weapon, one by the name of Soul Calibur. And instantly in a heartbeat, this lit a fire in Mitsurugi that he hadn't felt in 17 years. Realising that the return of Al Ghul was in the realm of possibility, he sold his farm and set out to finish the jewel that they had started 17 years ago. And up to now, we actually don't know the outcome of that battle. But yeah, that's pretty much the history of Mitsurugi. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and found it very informative, as I did want to go into detail of this character as Mitsurugi is in fact my favourite character in the series. His desire to become stronger every single game is something I can't help but admire. It's very inspiring in a way, as the man never seems to be content with what he has unless there is no challenge there for him. So from what you can tell, I'm extremely pleased to see that he's in Soul Calibur 6. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I just want to give you all a heads up that next week I'll be talking about Yoshimitsu and then after that I'll be talking about Sophitia as I do want to celebrate her reveal in the Soul Calibur 6 trailer as well. If you have any other suggestions in mind, throw it down in the comment section below as it's a great way of letting me know what you guys would like to see. Now before this video wraps up guys, if possible let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel as YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So by giving it a thumbs up it helps out a ton. And if you would like to go that extra step we also have a Patreon set up so a link for that will be down in the description below. Anyway guys as always please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.